let's uh, let's head over to Minneapolis. And there was no particular reason for me doing this, other than I saw a bunch of memes about this going around, <laughs> and I thought I'd, I'd fact check the memes basically. And it turns out the memes were actually true, right? So, so, so what, what's happened? So th- th- this is obviously uh, referring to the the death of George Floyd, Saint George Floyd, I believe, is the way that YouTube is going to make us refer to him, uh, who who was brutally murdered by a white supremacist in Minneapolis in June 2020. And obviously, there were huge riots, segments of the city got burned down, people died uh, because of this. And so the very progressive, very woke Minneapolis council, city council, uh, moved to defund the police and establish a, quote, holistic public safety force. Just yeah. sounds like police with extra steps, really, doesn't it? Was this the uh, the social workers thing? Yeah. Where they wanted to fire all the police and then bring in social workers yeah. to you know, deal with yeah. terrorist and, attacks. And they unanimously in June, uh, voted to approve a proposal to eliminate the city's police department, <laughs> marking the first step to establish it, towards establishing a new holistic approach to public safety, which worked great. Uh, so this this obviously comes on the he- uh, heels of the George Floyd uh, death. Um, and uh, I love some of the activists. I love some of the way the activists chime in, and they get they they obviously get some radical Twitter person to come in and give a, give a, give us their opinion. And this is brilliant, right? Young black and brown people in the streets made this happen. Black organizers demanding abolition for generations made this happen. Says Miski Noor of Black Visions Collective. Now on this new terrain, Minneapolis can start practicing a new vision of safety that defends black lives. I'm I'm reading this out verbatim because I want everyone to. Pin this on the wall. This is something they claim. We are the ones who deserve credit for abolishing the police. Thank you very much. If it wasn't for the black and brown people in the streets and the activists demanding this, black organizers demanding this, all of the deaths that that came from the defunded police wouldn't have been possible. They want you to know they're proud of this. Right? We are closer than at any time in history and anywhere else in the country to a safe, thriving city without police. In what universe does that make any sense so uh, under the proposed plan the city would eliminate the existing police department and replace it with a department of community safety and violence prevention which will have responsibility for public safety services prioritizing a holistic public health oriented approach so it's like the hippies have taken over the police right like did actually kind of sounds like an capistan public safety services limited it kind of does <laughs> doesn't it right but, uh, but it would be overseen by a director, nominated by the mayor, approved by the city council, and only individuals with non-law enforcement experience in community safety services, including but not limited to public health and or restorative justice approaches, would be eligible to hold the post. So nobody who was in any way trained to be able to act like a police officer. Because, you know, the people who are best at handling police officer duties under pressure a risk of your life while holding a gun. The best person to do that is someone who's completely non-trained. Bureaucrats. Yeah. That's what I want. When when there's gunshots going off and hell's going down, breaking loose, uh, what I want is someone with a clipboard there, to, mm. or presumably a tablet these but days. E- but even if we want to take them at their best here, they're saying, that, you know... The, <laughs> Still ridiculous. The argument is that a police officer is bad at handling black and brown communities because they'd be more likely to kill them. Okay, well, if you take a complete random off the street who's completely untrained in anything, give them a gun and put them in the same position... But I'm think, sure they'll do fine. You think they're better? Like, I'm yeah. sure they'll do great. You don't want someone trained as a police officer to be a cop, man. No. Trust me. I want Karen. I want Karen <laughs> who has her strong opinions and stuff. Uh, racist Karen as well. <laughs> that, that's the thing. These these are very racial organizations. Uh, but, I mean, this, this, this went really... This went downhill very, very swiftly, right? So within one month, 200 police officers had left Minneapolis Police Force because they were like, oh, well, we feel persecuted. Um, yeah, they, uh, which understandably, right? And that was around 20% of the time. Because they only had 850 police officers anyway. So 200, uh, 200 of them leaving like in a month, that's pretty bad. I mean, one officer, one officer said, it's almost like a nuclear bomb hit the city and the people who didn't perish are standing around. Uh, I'm surprised that we've still got cops showing up to work, to be honest. Right? So two months after that, it was reported that there was a massive crime surge going on in Minneapolis. I mean, like, wow, who could have imagined this? Like, what, what, what is the causal reason for this crime surge? Uh, it's like ca- we threw our police department under the bus, said we were going to disband them and defund them. Yeah, they all quit in protest, and now 
now there's no one to police the streets. And now there's crime rocketing out of control, right? So council members press police chief, uh, police chief uh, Medaria Arondondo, probably pronouncing that wrong, about the uptick in crimes that included daylight carjackings, robberies, assaults, shootings, and street racings. Uh, residents are asking, where are the police? Said council member Jamal Osman. Well, Jamal, we know where they are. <laughs> They're at home saying, not my problem, sorry. Jamal, how did you vote on the council? <laughs> yeah. Well, I- incidentally, Jamal himself probably is a Democrat, yes. It's a very very much a Democrat stronghold. It's, well, I, it's I, I, El Hano Mars district. I assume as well these robberies, assaults, shootings, and street racings are all taking place. The Ku Klux Klan are doing this, presumably. Um, because yes, they kept saying the far right were infiltrating the protests. They, so. they have travelled to El Hano Mars constituency, which which is colloquially known as Little Mogadishu, uh, in order to enact racist violence, I presume. Uh, that's not included in any of the reports, but we can just make that assumption. Uh, but they, but uh, Jamal says, there is only pu- that, that, that is the only public safety option they have at the moment, MPD. They rely on MPD, and they're saying they're nowhere to be seen. Uh, Council President Lisa Bender accused police of intentionally not enforcing laws or making arrests. Yeah, you voted to get rid of them. <laughs> Of course they intentionally <laughs> okay, decided on. to not enforce the laws. No, no, because it's like, um, the police are not enforcing the law. What police? Yeah. A fifth of them are gone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 there's right. no police officer who's going to enforce the <laughs> yeah, law, you idiot. Yeah, exactly. This, I mean, but they, they're right, yeah, they're not enforcing the laws. Um, but uh, the, the crime data shows showed a rise in assaults, robberies, and homicides, so it's property crimes, arsons, etc., etc., um, and more people have been killed in the city in the first nine months of 2020 than those slain in the previous year in its entirety. So it's like, right, okay, good, good trend. Nice upward trend of murders. Uh, and then, but I mean, it's really bad stuff as well. We, we're, we're flipping about it because of our distance to it, mm. but if, the, the, if you were getting close to it, you'd realize just how horrific this actually was which again but who didn't see this coming you know? I- exactly who didn't see this coming and exactly why this should be pinned on the black lives matter activists who demanded it after they went and burned down and looted and robbed and did a bunch of stuff right for example like th- this is this is just reports from locals right of how bad this is Scores of victims have included a seven-year-old boy wounded in a drive-by shooting, a woman who took a bullet that came through a living room wall while she was watching TV with her family, and a 17-year-old girl who was shot in the head and killed. Uh, one uh, long-time community activist uh, described uh, who, who cannot recall another time when things were this bad, not even when the city was branded Murderapolis during a spike in violence in the mid-1990s, says, if you want to talk about pandemics, we're dealing with a pandemic of violence. We're under siege. You wake up and go to bed in fear because you just don't know what's going to happen next. And our city failed to protect us. Homicides are up 50% with nearly 75 people killed across the city. More than 500 people have been shot, which is the highest number in more than a decade, twice as many as in 2019, and there are more than 4,600 violent crimes, which is carjackings, robberies, and various other muggings. Uh, Good news. Good news for Minneapolis. Black Lives Matter. Real success story there, right? So, come... uh, That that was uh, by September 16th. Come the 28th of September, so just later that month, uh, the New York Times uh, reported that actually um, a bunch of the council members are saying maybe maybe we want to redo on defunding the police. Uh, maybe we want to rethink this because actually the, the, the changes happened very quickly and the results came back very, very swiftly. Council member Philippe Cunningham uh, reported that the pledge itself was up for interpretation. And... Uh, <laughs> The defund the police pledge. Yes, yes. And uh, following the pledge being made, the majority of the council members had interpreted the language differently. Council President Lisa Bender uh, said, I think our pledge created confusion in the community and in our wards. No, I don't think it did. No, I think think it was crystal clear. You signaled to the criminals that you weren't going to arrest them, that you were going to target the police for trying to target them. And the criminals were like, thank you, sir. You know, mission uh, message received. You know, and I'll get out there and just start shooting them, I guess. Um, so, yeah, it's it just, it's unbelievable, right? But the thing is, did they ask the residents of Minneapolis whether they'd like the police to be defunded? Because the answer is obviously, no, they damn well didn't, right? Um, according to the uh, poll from the Minneapolis Star Tribune, a majority of residents, including 50% of the black community, opposed reducing the size of the police department. And that's not like, you know, including ones who wish to increase it. That's just people who oppose reducing it. So most black people do not want to abolish the police. 
And that's because presumably they have to live in these neighbourhoods that have suddenly had massive skyrocketing crime. Uh, but anyway, the uh, the wrap up of the story and why it's come up now is because on 13th of February, we found out from ABC News that in fact, uh, millions and millions of dollars are going to be spent actually recruiting new police officers after this catastrophic failed Black Lives Matter experiment got a bunch of people killed, like dozens and dozens of people killed, actually. And, uh, and it's clear that major cities must have policing. It's just writings on the wall. Jesus Christ. We've, we've tried it. Now. I mean, now, <laughs> like... We, fellas, we, after these million-dollar you know, exercises and lots of people killed, we come to the conclusion, we need a police force. Yes. Jesus it, Christ. I mean, like, any, any sensible person who could make logical inferences already knew this, but for some reason, Black Lives Matter didn't know this. Slowest and now that, kids in the classroom. Uh, absolutely. And now that we've run the experiment and it killed way more people than should have died, uh, we, we now have returned to the point where they're like, okay, yeah, I, we, we are going to... Refund the police. Refund the police, yes. They, they were down 638 officers, so more than 200 officers had quit, uh, and an unprecedented number of officers went on extended medical leave and basically uh, just clocked off. So the city being beaten up at a lot of these protests as well. Yes. Sorry, peace, peaceful protests. That yeah. Hurt nobody. And and the constant demonization of the police online probably hasn't helped this at all. Because the police obviously like I am not I'm not someone who's like, oh, police have done nothing wrong, back the blue, and all this sort of stuff. I'm not one of those people, right? Huh. I, I just recognize that a, a being a police officer should be a position of honor, right? There should be some honor in it. And that that helps put the police officer in a mindset where he feels that he is held to a higher standard because they have to be held to a higher standard right but that doesn't mean like that police officers are bad or anything like that it actually means that they they serve a necessary and good role in society but they exercise power on behalf of the state and therefore they should be subject to excess scrutiny because of the position they have which makes sense um but uh, anyway the city council so less than a year on uh, unanimously, and remember they unanimously voted to defund the police and get rid of the police department, well now they've unanimously voted to approve additional funding that the police have requested. So all of them... Six million dollars. Yep, six million dollars. That's not even very much, to be honest. Uh, the, the the budget for the, the police department was 200 million. But that's just uh, for No, sorry, 1.3 billion. But that's just for recruitment. That's just for the recruitment process. Because they've lost process. more than a fifth of the staff there. They have. If, if this was any <clears throat> under other industry, you would call this industrial action. This is a strike. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If, you know, twenty odd percent of your staff just <laughs> leaving outright. But and, but, they can't do that because they're police, so they but, just quit instead. More importantly, the poli the people who are running these organizations would probably get fired. Like you'd be like, what what the hell have you done to get like, you know, a fifth of the staff to to to, to quit? You know, what have you done? Like whatever you've done, you're fired because you messed up, right? But, uh, but yeah, they, they unanimously voted to approve the funding. And uh, yeah, so that's basically the end of the story. I did want to come back on something you said, though. So you mm -hmm. said, what was it? What was the percentage that said they didn't want the police defunded? 50% uh, of black people, but the uh, they didn't give a percentage of just overall, okay, but it was so majority. Just blacks Ma in Minneapolis. Ma majority did not want defunding, and 50% of blacks didn't want defunding, and a percentage of those would have been increased funding as well. Because there's, so. there's a thing. like It's it's complex in the sense that, of course, you've got sympathy for the people, because anyone could have seen this coming, but if, you, if you've if owned a house there, your life's there, you ain't moving anywhere. No, like you, You're just having this thrust on you. you know, yeah. Fair enough. Like, oh, a bunch of crazy activists in the street are screeching about black people and want to get rid of the cops. No, thank you. But just, you know, if you're not aware, like, these people are going to have a bad time. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And you've got sympathy for them. But at the same time, I looked at the voting record of this district, and this voting record is is very, very, very Democrat. Insufferably like, so. Insufferably Democrat. Like, 25% Republican, 65% Democrat on any given election, as high as 80% Democrat. And that's, it's it's like, I did this interview with Andy No um, in mm -hmm. here talking about Portland. And if you count up the pro antifa side of the vote, they would have actually, if they just ran one candidate, the Antifa side would have won that mayoral election yeah. in Portland. That's how bad the population are there. They're voting for this. So I have to look at Minneapolis and well and think, look, if you guys are voting 60 to 80% uh, Democrat, you get what you deserve. I'm yeah, sorry. you find like, out the hard way that actually... No yeah. individual deserves this, obviously, but as a collective... Ugh. Yeah, I mean, what, 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 like, if you guys are just going to keep voting for the people who are going to end up getting more people in the street killed... Well, then what can any what can anyone do but i mean at least Go on, blame trump go for it yeah, yeah orange man bad yeah. somehow he calls these people to die over the last few months i guess he, he must have done 
You know what I mean? Like Trump's got nothing to do with George Floyd or Derek Chauvin, who wasn't charged anyway, yep. was he? It's always so, been a Democrat stronghold. Yeah, so. it's exactly. It's Democrats doing this to black people, I guess you could say, if that's how you frame these things in racial terms. But it's just that they found out the hard way that, look, this is just not going to fly. You're not going to have a city, some sort of utopian city that doesn't have police. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> 